So welcome back to this course on using Git for version control. Now we have done all the setup so far. We have created the planets directory and we have explained how the git init command works. So we have initialized a, a git repository. Now we are actually ready to start um, doing some version controlling. Now this is going to be a simulation of a real world project and we're going to go back to the same story of the Wolfman and Dracula and about all the planets. Okay, so this is just a theme for this um, course, for this video series. Uh, but in real life, obviously, you would be working on your own projects, something like source code or LaTeX manuscript files or something equivalent. But we are going to just have a simulation here. Okay, so let's get started. So we are going to learn things like how do I record changes in Git and uh, basically checking status of the current repository and uh, record notes about what type of changes you have made um, and how that should be done okay so if you are following along um, at your own pace by pausing the video and practicing this you're welcome to do that and there is also this additional notes which is based on the software carpentries um, lecture notes uh, I think this is chapter 4 yes it is chapter 4 and it's called tracking changes okay and that's what we are going to be doing um, in this video all right first of all let's make sure we are in the right spot pwd print working directory says that we are in the planets directory okay now remember during the last video we had made the moons repository and showed how one should not be initializing yet another git repository inside moons and i showed how to do an rm-rf to completely remove um, any git artifacts from the moons folder so if you are already in moons you should back up one level by doing cd dot dot but we are not currently in moon so you should be in planets and we are now ready to go so let's say i want to create a file called mars and it's going to be a text file so it's going to be mars dot text we're talking about planets after all so let's just uh, do something about planets uh, or make some notes about this mars okay and it's going to be a text file now file extensions are not completely necessary uh, but it's helpful just for the user and for the operating system to point some nice icons um, for example if it's a text file it's going to give you a text kind of icon a suitable icon so it's only for that purpose okay but you don't strictly need a an extension in in the world of uh, unix or uh, mac uh, for that matter uh, but certainly in the world of unix based operating systems you don't need it and git follows like a unix type of uh, framework or principle so you don't strictly need a, a, an extension but we are going to use one just to for our purposes okay so i'm going to talk about the suitability of mars um, as a base for the mission that we are talking about the planetary mission um, and you can use any text editor i'm going to use the nano text editor we already talked about text editors in fact we even set the text editor that git commits are going to use so note that you can use any text editor here and that's independent of the text editor that was configured earlier okay so you remember that we had configured uh, git config ashash list should hopefully bring up the text editor that we are configured and we had said that core editor is equal to nano dash w now this is only for commit messages so things that you're going to be describing what changes you made okay now that is going to be completely different to the editor you are going to use here in fact you can even use let's go back to the desktop so planets um, folder and you can see the git hidden folder here you can actually go and just create a file in um, your text editor of your operating system in a graphical environment that's certainly possible and you can call it mars and the dot text extension uh, is what I chosen um, because I use uh, used a notepad file which is basically a dot text document so you can use that and you can type it in here for example you can say cold and dry but everything is my favorite with the UK spelling favorite color okay now this is certainly allowed now there's some couple of problems here um, just uh, from the notepads perspective so basically notepad uses different type of line endings but we've already configured git to handle the line endings suitably 
So if you have not done that, then using Notepad might be a little bit uh, inconvenient when you're collaborating um, in a large scale repository. But um, if you have some other editor like Sublime Text or Visual Studio Code or any other text editor, Notepad++ in Windows, um, so these should all work fine. You should be able to explicitly set line endings in those. Uh, but we have configured Git auto to, to do this automatically for us. So um, this is one way of certainly working on your projects, and this is absolutely fine. But in this course, we are going to I'm going to delete this for the time being. In this course, we have already set up um, Git. Uh, we, have, we we are more comfortable in the terminal in this case because it demonstrates like a unified workflow. So that's why I prefer to use a terminal based text editor because it just certainly speeds up the workflow, at least for me. But you're welcome to use any text editor you want, okay? But in this course, we are going to be sticking with Nano. So to edit the file with Nano, you use nano master text. Um, it's similar to the um, concepts you've learned uh, in the shell class, in the shell lesson, okay? So I'm going to type the same thing again, cold and dry, but everything, okay, I think I misspelled something here, okay, uh, is my favor right, the UK spelling, color, okay, it doesn't matter what spelling, but all right, I just like it this way, okay, call me biased, um, so I write out, so control O for writing out, and I use the file marsh.txt to write out, okay? Uh, and it says wrote one line. So clearly this file contains just one line and control X to exit out, okay? Uh, all right, so ignore that, um, notification. So uh, now if we list the files, you can see that there is this moons directory that we made and there is marsh.txt that we created, okay? Now, I'm going to also remove the moons directory because that's not where our current work is going to be based on, right? Based, uh, so we're going to just rm-rf. This is a very powerful command. This is Unix remove, not like a, a recycle bin or a trash can based removal. It's a permanent uh, removal. So rm-rf, the rf version is particularly destructive. Okay, so now if I ls, it's going to say I got only mars.txt. Now you can uh, look into what the, uh, the contents of mars.txt are by catting. So cat.mars.txt, like you learned in the Unix uh, shell uh, lesson, is going to show the contents of uh, the text um, in, in the file. Okay, so basically the contents of the file will be displayed to you. I can go back to the desktop and I can go back to planets and open this in notepad and I am going to get exactly the same content. So you can work in a graphical environment or you can work in a terminal environment. In this course, we are going to be working on a terminal environment, but they are going to be identical, okay? So I'm not going to repeat this concept again. Okay, so now comes the first command, uh, the git command that uh, in this context. So yeah, so you'll all be working on projects like this Instead of this mars.txt file, you may have your own thesis text here, or you could be working on some source code for your project. Okay, so git status is the command that we are going to learn, and the command says very clearly no commits have been made yet. That means that we haven't really started tracking anything in our project. So we don't have anything to describe our project yet, we don't have anything to describe any changes to the project yet. Okay, so there's nothing that's been committed to the repository, to our revision control systems repository, okay? And it says, oh, there's some untracked files present, uh, and it says uh, in a colored list, depending on the configuration of your text editor, you may have a colored um, output or not, but it doesn't matter. It says very clearly that mass.txt is now untracked, okay? And it gives a helpful hint saying use git add and it within the angle brackets is a file to include in what will be committed so first you got to tell what will be committed okay and then it will offer to uh, and then you can make some changes and commit them and track all those changes so currently any change i make will not be tracked so you will not have a version tracking system yet okay all right so now basically uh, it, we follow the helpful hint given by git, okay? So git add with the file name. 
So I'm going to clear my screen or basically let, let me keep the screen here and um, because if I clear the screen you will lose uh, this helpful message right so I'm going to say git add mars.text okay right and now it says look the line feed endings will be replaced by carriage return line feed in mars.text so when it puts into the repository uh, when we configured git for the first time uh, we said core dot auto crlf is equal to true or is equal to input depending on unix or mac uh, so that automatically line feed will be replaced so the file will have its original line endings which is a windows based line endings will be now uh, converted automatically um, so in the in the working directory so the directory in the file system will have the original line ending so that notepad or anything can read it okay but in the repository the uh, line endings will be suitably handled so it's just a warning it's just to let you know how it's going to handle things it is not such a critical thing to further act upon but it's good to know what's happening and that's the effect of our automatic line um, uh, line feed setting so just to refresh your memory now i'm going to clear my screen you can use Control l or the clear command to screen your screen clear your screen so now if I say git config dash dash list just to refresh the memory we had set core dot auto crlf is equal to true okay and that's the result of uh, the site the message the warning message that you saw earlier is the result of this um, setting okay now I'm going to clear my screen again now if I ask for git status so that's the important it's an important command we'll be repeating this command over and over again so git status now says aha uh -huh, there's no commits yet that means we haven't described our changes to git yet but something's ready to be committed so changes to be committed there is a new file and now it's in green so that means it's now ready to be committed okay that means you can now tell git what the changes you have made and now you can also start tracking those changes from this point onwards it's still got to make that commit but now git is ready to accept that commit that's what the status means okay so now let's go and commit it that means we are now going to start tracking after this point we're going to be tracking all the changes to the repository that means you can restore the repository to this point or you can restore the working directory to this point if necessary if needed okay so i'm going to say start nodes on using mars as a base Okay, we're going to be in this theme of this uh, video, uh, following the software carpentry's notes, uh, we are going to be using this interplanetary mission to Mars, or interplanetary mission, um, uh, that's the theme of the workshop uh, of this video series, so we're going to be using a suitable commit message. Now it's important to use uh, a, a meaningful commit message, because the commit messages can be searched later upon in history to identify something specific that you have changed okay so you have to have a brief commit message uh, if you're just you're going to be using a one line commit message it's helpful to keep it keep it certainly let's say about 50 characters or certainly not more than 72 characters it's, just, it's not a hard limit it's just for easiness of reading and understanding now if you want more detailed notes you can actually open a file in a text editor and put like a, a, a summary message with 50 characters or 72 characters or something brief and punchy as a header and leave a blank line and do the rest of the commit messages or all the details can be done later so using import using very helpful commit messages are critical to the success of your project just from an ergonomics point of view, just from a human understanding point of view, because these commit messages can be searched them in more more, lead, more detail uh, at a later point of time. So let's say our memory starts fading away in six months in this project. Using this helpful commit message would say, hey, what has been done in that particular commit? So the commit message should be a reflection. And this is where the computer cannot help us. The human has to, the project, maintainer the, the the coder or the project maintainer has to do this it's a human task here okay all right so that's uh, my little sermon on commit messages um, i cannot stress the emphasis on it 
but with that I'm going to move on okay so it now says one files change okay what does that mean so what it means that okay there's something that's been changed uh, in this case we have one file and that's a new change okay that's something that was not originally present in the repository but it now added um, and it says one insertion so git works with the unix type of uh, thinking or a unix type of um, all the terminology is a unix based terminology when it says one insertion what it means is there's a one line of text inserted there so the changes happened and they're isolated to one line and the plus says that this change is an addition okay that means things were not there before in the repository there's nothing called master text earlier so and now that files changed so a new addition is also a change and uh, one line of text has been added that's what it means and it also helpfully says it's a create i ignore the more thing this is to do with um, unix permissions model which is already covered in the shell uh, lesson right so there you go you have made now the first uh, um, change that can be tracked all the way back so the project can be tracked all the way back to this change even after one year two year how many years pass it doesn't matter your project can always recover this particular status of your file okay even if you make a thousand changes to your master text file you can still recover all those changes and bring the project bring the file back to this status as of today as of this moment that's the power of it now if i ask for git status again it says ah i am on branch master we are not talking branches in this um, workshop or in this series of video but um, it says helpfully i am on branch master there's nothing to commit that means everything that needs to be committed have been already committed and um, my working directory or my working tree is clean that's nothing to do okay okay so it tells us that everything is up to date okay now we may have gone to lunch or we may have taken a short break and we may not have remembered what has been done so to quickly show the project's history you can use the git log command okay so that's the next command we are going to learn okay so i'm going to clear my screen i can use control l combination for that so i'm going to say git log and there it uh, explains everything about the commit so there is a unique identifier for the commit and that's this long uh, 40 character long code it's called the sha1 code sha-1 it's a 40 character alpha numeric code that uniquely identifies each set of changes or specifically each commit okay and it's a unique uh, thing so each change in your project or each commit in your project is going to have a different commit sha Okay, so that's how you pronounce it, commit SHA. SHA stands for Secure Hashing Algorithm, but we'll skip the details of that. And it says there's something called head, which points to master branch. We'll talk about head in a lot more detail later on. And it identifies who's the author of that commit. So if you are working with a collaborator, and the collaborator has set up his git correctly, or his or her git correctly, then um, you will see the if the if the commit has been made by your collaborator in this project then you will see their uh, details such as the full name and the email address that they use for this project and it will also say specifically when this commit was made including a detailed timestamp okay um, this uses the system time uh, for the timestamp okay all right so git log is a helpful command it's going to it's a very useful command to list everything in a reverse chrono chronological order and that is helpful when you start having more and more changes into the document because you are more interested in knowing what happened in the recent past that's a typical workflow so that's why it chooses the reverse chronological order okay so with that we are now uh, ready to do the next set of changes and see how the version tracking can be done uh, I'm going to stop the video here for now. Uh, the lesson still continues. Um, so we have uh, we will be splitting this lesson into smaller chunks so that we can absorb this in um, tiny pieces. Okay, so with that, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye.